All right. Um, now that we're done with the bottom of the box, um, actually before we're done with that, that, I'm going to just do some minor tweaks. Um, something I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the modify panel here. And as you can see, um, over here, the tops, they've got kind of a uh, uh, non, it, kind of a flat but not flat um, scale to it. So I'm just going to scale them out like so and make sure those are those work and I'm going to do the bottom ones here and just make sure you don't grab the indents and I'm going to scale those in really quick somewhat something like that and then I'm going to do the same thing to the top here and the bottom um, I'm just going to kind of scale this outward a little bit and then grab these and scale them inward and that's just uh, just me being a little bit anal retentive on that but okay so that's pretty much good so now that I'm done with this what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, unhide all and that's going to give us our box up here okay now if you want to work with um, something and you're you want it still visible um, there's a couple things you can do um, alt X is x-ray um, and what that does is is the same thing as going into the pro object properties right click and go to object properties and you can ch check see through here um, and what that does is it allows me to see you know work through it um, the next thing you can do is freeze it this basically means I can't select it but I can work around it so let's um, let's go in here, and the uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our our um, box to an editable folly because that's personally what I like doing. So you can go to right click and you can just straight up to an editable poly. You don't need to add a modifier in there. Go to the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to size it up. So I'm going to add in. Add that little bit of thickness there, and then since I've got the same one selected here, I'm just going to add that little bit of thickness there, and then um, instead of going both ways uh, with that, I'm going to grab this polygon. Now I'm holding again. I'm holding Alt and Middle Mouse to rotate, and I'm going to grab this polygon, and I'm just kind of going to move that like so maybe a little bit bigger maybe a little bit wider um, I can zoom here alright so uh, let's shrink that a little bit I want to move it down a little bit I can always just kind of so something like that I think that looks good um, you know relatively relatively basic um, and then from there what I can do is I can do um, I can go to my inset and this time I'm going to go to my object properties okay and as you can see it's set to this is something I didn't show you last week um, first let's let's move this to a reasonable thing um, so we're going to inset this one to something along the lines of like this that's pretty close Maybe a little bit less. So something along the lines of that. Now if you notice here on the inset, you know, sometimes you'll have a group thing up here. If you click on it, you can do it by polygon too. And that literally will save us a ton of time. Okay, and I didn't show you that last video because I just want I want you to get the basics down. And too many options confuse you. Uh, it confuses most people. I shouldn't say you. Um, but it confuses, it's just a lot to deal with. So then I'm going to check that and make sure I got that other one. And then let's uh, go to the extrude. And it looks like this is all back to the original settings. So let's just kind of move that inward. That looks about right. And then we're just going to 
say check like so and there's our treasure chest top now um, I'm gonna alt W to go into the big thing here and I'm gonna unselect all my polygons and I'm gonna get out of this for a second so sometimes um, you have to rotate objects and if I rotate this object right now um, with my hotkey E um, if I rotate this it's gonna rotate around that pivot point okay undo and if I rotate around that pivot point what's going to happen is I have to say I want the treasure chest open so I gotta rotate it I gotta move it I gotta you know play with it around sometimes it's easier to change the pivot point and I'm gonna go here um, go into this hierarchy tab right here I'm gonna say adjust pivot point and then as you can see it's already lined to the bottom and so I'm just going to go in the left viewport here and I'm gonna go back like so um, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it one thing that I really didn't talk about um, and I should have talked about during the interface is that you can have different types of, of uh, views you can have realistic you can have shaded you can have uh, consistent colors. I kind of prefer fur shaded. I think it just adds a, a nice overall tone, especially when I'm looking modeling organic stuff. Um, and then you can control the left, the right, you know, um, just simply by oops, simply by clicking on the left, and you can just go up here and click one of these. Um, and if you want you can right click in the zoom all and if you go into layout you can actually choose different layouts and you can always move these move this X around um, I've always found I like working with this one um, because I just alt W back and forth so that's that's my personal personal favorites um, but anyway back to this so now that I've um, now that I've, I've changed this pivot point okay and I want to rotate that now I rotate it like a treasure chest. Alright, so um, I'm going to rotate this up here and it doesn't really matter how much I rotate it or how far I rotate it just as long as I've got this. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to take care of we're going to go um, polygon mode back here and now this is where I'm going to save myself some time instead of having to resize and reshape this all I'm gonna go into bevel I'm gonna go into the bevel settings and it's gonna of course jack up the first time we do it so let's uh, let's move this all the way back okay so what bevel does is ooh. Uh, all right so what bevel does is uh, Um, not only extrudes it, so they extrude the outside like so, so you can choose how far you extrude it to, but you can also control how much it outlines the in or outside of it. So we can actually just move this in here, and I'm going to actually cancel this because I want to outline first. Uh, let's just uh, outline. Actually, sorry, not outline. I'm really screwing up today. I want to inset. There we go. Inset, check. Bevel, check. All right, so bevel's in there. Um, so bevel, move this in there, and then I'm going to just... Uh, Change my bevel a little bit so you guys can see something like so, and I think we're good to go. Um, oops, and check. All right, so we're good to go. Now we've got our treasure chest uh, top done. All right, now um, you know I can open, I can close. The nice thing is, if I want to close it, I would do it at like so. So we can go right there. Marriage closed. All good. All, all, all set to go. Now, um, you know, I want to add some 
some decorations in there. So what I think I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some quick hinges in there. And uh, with the hinges, I'm just going to do cylinders. And I think I'm going to just do right over here like so. And sometimes it's, if you go too small, it doesn't like you. So I don't need these height segments in here. So I'm going to adjust these height segments down. And I don't need 18 sides for a basic hinge. So we're going to move that down. And then I'm going to change my radius just like so. I'm going to change my height, which is, you know, height and, and radius and width and all that stuff changes in accordance to which viewport you actually create it. So I think I'm going to just do five, and that will give me a kind of a rounded area here. And I'm just going to kind of look and see if I like that. And yeah, I think that's okay. Maybe a little bit, you know, a little bit smaller hinges. So we're just going to move that over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move that accordingly, right like so. Um, kind of average it out. And I held shift down, okay, to clone it. Now, instead of doing a copy this time, I'm going to do an instance. And you're going to ask why I'm doing an instance. Well, I'm doing an instance because I'm modeling the exact same thing over and over. So, take a look. If I do an instance, and I say, okay. Now, I'm not converting this to an editable poly. I can, I can add stuff on. Um, but I've got a cylinder. And this, it'll boldface the, the cylinder if it's an instance. I can go over this one, and this is bold because it's an instance. You can always make these unique by clicking this button. That basically means uh, changing the, um, giving it an individual property. But the reason I do that is, and I'm going to just zoom up so you can see this a little bit better. But the reason I'm doing that is, say I want one more side in there. Done. Well, now the both of them are done. Um, say I decided, okay, I don't want to deal with that, and I move it down to one. Now I've selected a different object, and with an instance, what you do to one happens to the other. Okay, so I'm going to go backwards to five. So that's why I'm doing an instance. Now, um, one thing to know about an instance, if I were to right-click and make this an editable poly, that breaks that bond as an instance, and then I can't, it basically means that I have to go back and and uh, do that over again. All right. So now that we've got that done, um, I think that looks pretty good. Now I am going to do a uh, a let's see. We'll, we'll do a, a little skull plate on there for a lock. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my front viewport, and I'm just going to create a uh, a box like like so a little bit thick something like this and I'm gonna move it there and I'm gonna move it forward and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it downward now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move backwards a little bit. Actually, no, not backwards. I'm going to push it out and I'm going to move it down a little bit. And that's kind of going to be the start of our lock. Now, for this particular um, lock, what I want to do is I'm going to make this thicker so that it fits in both. So we just got to find the thickness, which looks like not that one. That's this one right here. All right, so I'm going to just make it thicker so it kind of fits in both areas. All right, now, there's a couple ways I can do this. Right now, this is just a placeholder, and I'm just kind of looking to see and feel how it, how it fits in there. All right, so I probably would move it down a little bit, just kind of, kind of put that in there, like so. And, yeah, I think that looks good. But, you know, I've got this in there, and I'm going to, um, I want to actually detail this up. So I'm going to put some polys in there. 
Um, normally you can just have this as a box and, and do stuff like that. But I'm going to detail this up. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to just, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little box modeling. So I'm going to move this off to the side. And then I'm going to just instance it. Say OK. Now, one thing I've, I've done is I've created a lot of boxes. You notice I'm already on box four. So one thing that we want to do is we always want to name stuff. And I know it's a pain in the butt. And everyone does not do it. But when you're doing a big scene, um, sometimes you can have anywhere up to, I don't know, I would say, I've seen up to a thousand different objects, you know, and it, it just gets worse, and especially if you've got skeletons and bipeds, and, and it's always worse. So we're going to name these um, in a second. I'm going to stop this right here, and then we're going to go to the next one.